Hello and welcome back to our Shooter Bot AI series. In this episode, we're going to finally add shooting abilities to our bot. So for this, we need to go onto our bot itself, the actor, and add the ability for it to shoot bullets. So let's go into the bot actor. And in here, we have to create a custom event for our fire bullet. Let's go here. Custom event. And call it fire bullet. So this is going to be the event that is called by our AI tree later to fire bullets towards the player. Now for this, we need to know who we're targeting and where we're aiming at. So for this, we need to shoot a bullet towards our target. Now our target is set currently on our uh, controller. So for that, we're going to get the controller. And we're going to get the AI controller. And the controlled actor for this is going to be itself. So, so the AI controller, we're going to go from here and get focus, focus actor. And that is now going to point to wherever they are aiming, if it is valid. That's the first thing we make to make sure we have here is if it's valid. So do valid. And do this as a uh, branching point here, the white one. So we'll check first of all if we have a focus actor, which we should do if they're shooting, but let's double check to make sure we can actually do it. And the reason why we're going to double check it is because we'll be using this actor reference to get the location and point towards it. So the premise of this is going to shoot a line trace out based on the shot. So we go is valid and drag out from here and do line trace by channel. Now on line trace by channel here we need a start and end point and this will go from the character's location towards the uh, the target location. For the start point we're going to get our actor location from our uh, from our um from our gun here. I'm going to drag that in here. And this is a gun reference. So we're going to get this and we're going to do get uh location you'll see get world location that'll be a start point the end point is going to come from our get focus actor drag that from there get location and plug that into your end point okay so that's going to shoot towards that trace to that actor there now we don't want our robot to shoot pinpoint accurate the whole entire time what we do want is to make it a bit random in its final accuracy uh, when shooting at the player so on the get actor location here for the target, we're going to drag this out and rotate this vector. And we'll put that into the end point instead. And the rotation for this, we're going to split the rotator and we're going to rotate it in the X here. Now X is used because that's the forward direction. We're going to do a randomness in that forward rotation. So here we're going to do out here and do random float in range. And we'll start off with a minus five there in the minimum and five in the maximum. We should see some randomness there. I change the draw debug type here for one frame. That is the duration, so you can see it a bit clearer. Um, but when they start shooting at me, um, we're going to see that uh, on the screen jump around all the time. And for this, I'm going to I've put in a tick event to fire the bullet. So we'll see it shooting at us the whole entire time if it sees us. Just for testing purposes, take it out there in a moment. So you can see here how the shooting here is more erratic and all over the place. So sometimes it's hitting me, sometimes it's not. It's all over the place. Okay, up and down. Okay. So, so you can customize that randomness by changing those min and max values as much as you like, and, uh, and that's it really. You can tweak those values whatever you want. I mean, you could even probably put something in the Y as well. I have to put this and put that Y. You can see also even further deviation going on from there. Okay. The main thing is his point is aiming towards us in a rough direction. If you increase that number uh, more, you'll see even greater deviation. So if I do like minus 25, 25, 5. 
see there even greater deviation and you'll really miss a lot of your shots which you may want okay okay at the moment none of these shots will hit the player now that's because by default the player character and all characters have their visibility tray set to ignore so what we can do here is quite simply just change the visibility trace channel here to camera bed now i'm just going to get rid of my tester here i'm going to tick delete that and i can change this duration uh to none okay so there is our line trace by channel um after this we need to take out our results and fire off our effects now if you're starting off with the starter project i've got here um you'll have these already if you don't you don't have to use these you can make your own effects it's whatever you want really um but what we're going to do is we're going to create a niagara niagara system in here so we'll go add component choose niagara particle system and we'll call that one okay call it niagara be fine and change the system here to the fire bullet visual effect and that is simply just this particle effect which shoots a bullet like trace around basically okay so we're using that for this and i'm going to go down and tell you that it's auto activate is turned off so when out here uh, line trace here happens we're going to drag this out and we're going to say to activate okay so activate it will shoot once and then deactivate and that's if you've got your own one you put that in there or whatever effect you may have if you do want this as starter files you can go onto patreon.com forward slash ryan Laley and get hold of the starter project files for this as well as all the other project files for my, my many projects okay so that's the activate that we also need to do a sound effect so i'm going to do a sound effect at the location and we're going to choose the shoot or fire i think it's called uh weapon fire there we go and you're going to spawn the location here at the actor's location so that's the effect part of the actual shot next we want to actually do the impact as well so on the return value for this we're going to check whether or not we actually hit something so i might actually put this oh no we'll leave it there it'll be fine um so i'm going to take this return value and drag that through here and do a branch because this part will only play if we actually do hit something and that is the impact visual effect so the sparks hitting off the wall so for that we're going to take our out hit and break that so get access to all that data from our line trace from there we can use our normals here impact normal to rotate our visual effect so here i'm going to do spawn system at the location that's going to spawn the impact visual effect the location for this is going to be from the location drag that over there and the rotation node is going to come from the impact normal we're going to take the impact normal here make rot from x and plug that into the rotation and we'll leave the rest of it ticked on as default compile and then save so now that will now shoot a line trace and visual effect towards us hopefully so let, again let's test that out let me put my tick back in what finish was i did it mean put our fire bullet back in okay and compile that now hopefully we should see some effects coming off okay got to mention the tick obviously is way too fast <laughs> so uh we can turn the tick down for this and uh for testing purposes so we can go to class settings so class defaults and change the uh tick rate tick interval here we'll change that to 0 0.5 so it'll shoot every half a second rather than every frame uh, maybe jump okay so you can see the effects coming from So what you can see there is those numbers are tweaked for the randomness the random uh part were too too high and it was hitting the floor basically it's aiming at the floor too much so we're just going to go down to our numbers here and tweak these back down do minus i'll do minus five and see how that looks five 
five file and let's turn down that volume because that's kind of crazy right, that's okay so let's hopefully that will feel a bit better I'll hit play okay so there is, there is. so it's hitting me and you see the sparks flying off of me Realize I've turned down my volume, but not the recording volume. Go back down here. Right. Okay. So try it again. So here you go. You can see the shots firing here. Okay. So slight issue with the Niagara effect there. So what we're going to do is replace it actually with something different. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this all along a little bit. And instead of the activation of this pre pre uh, pre assigned one, we're going to delete that and get rid of this activate. And instead we're going to spawn one in. So we're going to go spawn system at location. And we're going to choose our fire bullet visual effect and plug that in here. Then for our location and rotation, this is all going to come from our out hit here. Now this will work even if it doesn't hit anything. I'm going to take this down and do break and expand that open. And we're going to do trace star as the starting location for our effect. The rotation of it is going to be the look at rotation between the start and end. So we're going to take that out, look at rotation, plug in your trace end, and that is now your rotation of your visual effect. So, file and save that. And then if we test that out, should see the, the, the trace arounds happen. Excellent. So that's that one. Next thing we'll do is fix the sound here. So the sound at the moment is loud no matter where, where, how far away you are from it. So if we go over to the play sound at location here, um, we want to change its attenuation. Now, attenuation is a setting that you can apply to it here. Or you can make it you with a Q. Now Q is probably the easiest option. I don't know if this one has it by default. Let's have a look. Uh, I, uh, no, we don't. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on this. Uh, maybe not right click on it. Click on the little magnifying glass, and I'll take you to it. Here it is. Right click on that. Create Q. Go into here, and over here on the right hand side, you'll see override attenuation. So I can click on attenuation here. And I can then enable how far away I want the attenuation to be. I can change the radius, the fall off distance, and so forth. I'll leave it like that for now. That. Um, and we'll make sure we play the cue rather than the normal one. Fire. Use the template cue. So now it should be quieter further away here. Maybe too quiet. There you go. It's perfect. So I should be able to run away from him and he'll continue shooting at me. I've just got to lose sight of him for three moments. So the moment you see that he still shoots through the wall, we're going to fix that when we do the, the behavior tree stuff. So onto that now. So to go onto that, we're going to go to our behavior tree stuff. So let's go to AI and look at our behavior tree. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, a, a service on our trace sequence here. That service is going to look for a line of sight, and if it has that line of sight, then it's going to fire off our fire bullet. So we're going to go up top here and click New Service, and we'll rename it immediately. Call it Shooting Service. Okay, let's go into there. Okay, so for this, you have a few things. So what a service does is, whilst the behavior is inside the branch that the service is attached to, it will run. Okay, and you have some functions to override here which you can use. So the first thing we look at is activation AI. Now for activation AI, this will trigger as soon as it goes into the branch. So on controlled pawn here, we're going to cast that to our bot, and we're going to keep that as a reference. So as bot, right to variable. So now I've got a reference to the exact bot we have, and it's only doing it once on the activation. Next, I'm going to go to functions override and choose the tick AI. 
So this is going to be handling our actual shooting of it. But we only want to shoot if we've got line of sight to the player. The line of sight is going to be dictated by a sphere trace. Um, you can do any shape you really want, but we'll do a sphere trace. So I'm going to drag out from here and do a sphere trace by channel. So sphere trace by channel is going to take the starting position of our controlled pawn. So get controlled pawn, get actor location, plug that into start. And for the end, we're going to get our um, controller here and get focus like we did with the bullet. You get the focus actor and then you get the actor's location here. And that'll be our end position. The radius here, I'm going to increase to 64. So we've got a bit of uh, thickness to it. And again, tra change your trace channel here from visibility to camera. For actors to ignore, you're going to drag down and do a make array. And the reason why you do this is because you want to make sure it ignores itself. It doesn't actually hit itself. So drag your as bot variable and put that into the make array. That way it won't hit itself. So this sphere trace is going to go out towards the target actor and its focus and check whether or not we are uh, in line of sight. So on the return value here, we're going to take this out and do a branch. So this will only fire if it's true. Take you out here, actor here, break that and expand that out. Next, you want to take this hit actor and you want to see if this is equal to our focus actor. So we're going to drag the hit actor here to equal to two and we're going to see if we're equal to that. So I'm going to take my controller here, go promote that to a variable, just do it down here. Up here, sorry. Controller, and we'll promote that to a variable. We own a controller. So, and I can use that then down here and get the focus of it without dragging lines everywhere. We get focus actor, and let's put that into the branch uh, branching point here. So if this is true, that's where we want to shoot. So we can put that into a branch, and if that is true. Drag your as bot out, get a bit of fire bullet. And that's it. Plug that in there. You're done. Hit compile and save and go back to your behavior tree. On the chase sequence, right click on it and go to add service. And here you can add your shooting service. Now, with services, you can customize the interval of the tick on the right hand side here. This is set to 0 0.5 seconds with a random deviation of 0 0.1 meaning that the number will be either 0.4 or 0.6. And we'll leave it like that, that's totally okay. Okay, hit save and go back to my bot. And I'm gonna take out my tick here. I want that. And leave it all like that. So now let's test this out. So here's shooting me. If I go behind the wall, he won't shoot at me because he can't see me. But now I can see, he can see me again. There you go. So there we have now our AI shooting at us. So in the next episode, we'll make it so we can deal damage to the AI, shoot it, distract it, things like that. And when it dies, we'll make it ragdoll on the floor and fall over and respawn later. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where you can watch all of my content well before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members and my YouTube members too for their continued support. It really is amazing. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button. And I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.